What's up, everybody? Hope you're having a great day, or at least a better day than Amazon is. Amazon's Alexa is a colossal failure on pace to lose $10 billion this year. So Amazon Alexa was a bit of a pet pot project for Jeff Bezos. It was started back in November 2014, but was conceived of in 2011. And essentially, he wanted it to cost $20 to make and be controlled entirely by voice. Now, to be short, the Amazon Alexa, despite having lost the amount of money that it has, is an incredible device. You have essentially the entirety of human knowledge in the palm of your hand. The things it can do are a technological marvel. But the huge issue with Amazon Alexa is that it is sold at cost, which means whatever it costs to build it, that is what people pay for it. So if it costs $20 to build, including all the materials and the labor and the shipping, then Amazon will just charge $20 for that device. And the idea is that people will buy the Amazon Alexa, and then they will use the Amazon Alexa to spend more money on Amazon than they would have by just telling Amazon Alexa to buy them shoes or, or hats or what have you. And this is not a terrible idea. It's what's called a loss leader. It is a product sold at a loss to attract customers. So this is actually pretty common in business. And one of the more famous ones you might know about is the Costco hot dog. At a fifty, they are not making money on that hot dog, but it's a loss leader. You go to Costco and there's a food court there with super cheap, affordable food. And then maybe you stick around and you buy something else. It's something to get people in the door. Another huge example of this is printers and printer ink. Most companies lose money on the printers because they know if you buy the printer, then you'll have to buy the printer ink. And this has led Printer Ink to be one of the most expensive liquids in the world. $720 per liter, roughly, whenever this article was written. I uh, can't find it right now. 2022, so this is probably up-to-date information. But the idea is they can charge whatever they want for Printer Ink. Because once you've got the printer, you have to buy the Printer Ink. You no longer have a choice. The big idea, like I said, was for people to have no choice. If you had Amazon Alexa probably you were going to use it to buy things from Amazon.com, or at least that was the hope. It was a bit of a convenience factor. For example, I have on my phone both the Walmart app and the Meyer app. The Meyer app is absolute dog water. It is terrible, borderline, unusable. But the Walmart app is incredible. And as a result of that, I'm far more motivated to shop at Walmart. It's a convenience factor. And that's what Amazon Alexa was selling. The ability to just get whatever you wanted, whenever you wanted, by only having to say, hey, Alexa, buy me whatever. But the issue is, not a whole lot of people trust it. Look here. That plan never really materialized, though. It's not like Alexa plays ad breaks after you use it. So the hope was that people would buy things on Amazon via their voice. Not many people trust an AI with spending their money or buying an item without seeing a picture and reading reviews. And that's the big issue. Say I wanted my Alexa to buy me a pair of shoes. How would I, how would I even go about that? Would I say, hey Alexa, buy me men's Nampa food service shoe? Or, hey Alexa, buy me sport men's stamina Nuvoco cutback lace-up sneakers? It's, it's just impossible. How am I supposed to purchase anything? And maybe as I'm looking through this, I, I find one with bad reviews and think, oh, I don't want a shoe with four and a half stars. I, I want a shoe with five stars. The questions people were asking the Amazon Alexa was by and large things like, what is the weather? Or uh, trivial commands like play music. And it was getting billions of these interactions per week. But those questions, like it says here, those questions aren't monetizable. People asking Amazon Alexa what the weather is, you can't say, you know, the weather today is sponsored by um, the Raid Shadow Legends. It's 88 and sunny, just like how beautiful it is in our in-game with computer-like graphics or whatever. There's no money in just handing people information without the ability to advertise with that information. Google does this. They hand you whatever information you want when you type in a search. But then they show you ads for that, and they get money off of that. But Amazon Alexa, it doesn't. You ask it the weather, and it just tells you the weather. And for Amazon, often losing money with the promise of getting money in the future is not that big of a deal. But as we've seen so many tech companies starting to lose a lot of profits, here you can see Amazon specifically has lost 45% of their stock value in just this year alone. 
we start to see companies being a little more stingy. Yeah, sure, you know, I could take 10 or 20 years to become profitable, and that's not an issue because we have hundreds of billions of dollars to blow. But now we no longer have hundreds of billions of dollars to blow because we've lost 45% of our revenue. It's something that we've seen in Twitch, where these Twitch creators are being forced to add new types of monetizations because Twitch is just hemorrhaging money. Amazon makes nothing off of Twitch. They're just burning through money and they need some way to make live streaming profitable. And so when Amazon needs things to become profitable, they start having to cut stuff. So they've made pretty significant reductions in the Amazon Alexa department. It's a, a department that includes other things. It's the worldwide digital group along with Prime Video and so on and other things. But they're going to have to start making these cuts because there's just not the money there anymore. And this is where I want to talk about something a little bit different. Because what happens to those Amazon Alexas once Amazon stops supporting them? It's very likely that they will stop working. Or they'll work for a little bit, but having no support, no new parts, and no software updates, they'll just slowly fall apart. And this is a concern I have with kind of where our technology is going. If Tesla goes out of business for some reasons, probably the Tesla cars will still drive, but they'll have software bugs and issues that can't be fixed anymore. They'll have parts that are not manufactured by anyone else that will break. And that just leaves the consumer in a very awkward spot because they don't really own it. If my little 2010 Volkswagen has an issue, I take it to the store and I get it fixed. And if Volkswagen goes out of business and my 2010 Volkswagen has an issue, I still go to the store and get it fixed because it doesn't require anything other than just me. If T-Mobile, my carrier, goes out of business, then I can just take my same phone and go over to Verizon with it. And it's not really an issue. But if a company that exercises direct control goes out of business, then I'm pretty much just stuff out of luck. And this happened earlier this year. 350 blind people who were cured by 500,000 bionic eye implants face losing their sight again as firm goes bust. What happened here was a firm created an incredible product that for $500,000, they could fix your eyesight. But then a few years later, the firm went out of business. And so people had this eyesight and these retinal implants that required maintenance and software updates. And they just didn't have that anymore. So they lost their eyesight and then they got it back with this epic technology. And now they stand to lose it again because the technology is not supported and there are no other companies that can do it. And this is an issue we have when we don't owned the things that we're actually paying for. If Adobe goes out of business and I lose my Adobe Photoshop or or the, the cloud section of my Adobe editor, that's a huge loss for me. And that's hundreds or thousands of dollars that I've just poured into this product that I no longer have access to. And so that's what I want to caution you against is giving money over to these companies that can build in subscription models or force you to stay in monetization practices that are good for them but if they ever decide it's not profitable, then you're just kind of screwed. So be mindful when you buy. And and I once again, hope you're having a better day than Amazon is, uh, as they seem to be losing a lot of money. I'll see you later, y'all.